Thank you, Pastor Raj, and uh, thank you for that unexpected Bible quiz. I was taken off guard. <laughs> it is not out of syllabus, though. We should be knowing the books of the Bible. But uh, I want to give thanks to uh, Abba Father, first of all, and wish him a happy Father's Day. Thank you, Abba Father, for just this opportunity that we can all be breathing out here, living and sitting in our seats as of now. I would like to take this opportunity to thank our uh, spiritual father of mine, that is uh, Apostle Dr. Jerry D'Souza. And uh, truly, he's been a great father uh, to all of us. In fact, he's been a spiritual grandfather also. And of course, what a wonderful day that we are celebrating Father's Day just when he's become a papa, a grandpapa. And uh, it's an amazing thing. And of course, we have Joel, who's become a father a uh, day before yesterday. And, uh, you know, 16th of June is uh, when he's become a father. So, uh, welcome to the Father's Club. Amen. All right. So, you know, most of us are fathers out here. Thank you. It was a wonderful picture that we can cherish. And maybe after a few years, when we look at this picture, we would uh, bring back some memories. I like it when it comes on Facebook. Ten years ago, this is how you looked. And some memories come back. And it's really refreshing to look at those memories. You know, as uh, one of the brothers was sharing, that before you know you've become a father, time flies so fast. I remember when I was around six years old, I used to see my dad as a superhero. You know, I would walk in his footsteps. When I would go to say bye-bye to him, when he would leave for work. And sometimes the ground used to be moist in the balcony. And as he came out of that moisture, there would be footprints. And I would go and say bye to him. And I would try to walk in those footprints. However, my feet were very small compared to his. And I would try to match those feet on those footprints. I remember he used to take me to church and my fingers, or rather my palm, would be so small that I would clasp only his little finger. And I loved it when he would do that. I mean, I clasped his little finger like this and we would walk to church and back. And those were memories that I cherished with him. I cherished those times when he brought lollipops for me. And I would lick them all through, just enjoying because it came from my father. And there were so many beautiful memories that I have when I was in that young age. If my mother tried to fight with my father, I would defend my father. Because he was my superhero. How can he be wrong? He just can't be wrong. He's always right. You know, and as you grow, you get into your teens. You become 14, 13, 14, 15. And suddenly, your mind changes. This superhero now becomes a super villain. Everything that he did right now seems like he's done wrong. You start thinking, how can he be so foolish? How can he not understand these simple things? You start thinking that you know so much more than him. You start getting this feeling that he doesn't understand anything. And so... There's this rebellious phase that I went through. And I, whatever respect I had for him, started diminishing because of certain acts that were happening. You know, every time he beat me up, and I had a black eye sometimes, because he would use boxing gloves. And you know, I would go and tell my friends, I hit the bench. That's how it's become black. But that time, my respect for him would diminish. Every time he beat up my mother, Sometimes there would be blood on the floor. The respect for him would diminish. You know, sometimes because he was alcoholic, he didn't know what he was doing. And he would abuse us. There used to be bad words, physical abuse. And every time he did that, my respect for him would diminish. You know, he would call names like fatso, good for nothing, will not do anything in life. And my respect for him would diminish. 
And so as time passed, I became around 24 years old. Suddenly, you know why this happens actually in your teenage years? The reason why it happens, I've, I've understood that this is God's design. When you're in your teens and you think that your father is really foolish, this is happening because God wants you to start thinking about your own life. He wants you to start thinking of cutting off from that family. He start thinking about your own career. Start thinking about your own life. Start thinking about establishing your own foundations. And that's the whole nesting principle. If you watch a bird, the bird feeds worms to the chicks. But after some time, the same bird is kicking this bird out of the nest. Get out! Out! And this bird doesn't even know how to feed itself. And as the bird gets out of the nest, you know what the bird does? Instead of going and even if it sees a worm, it opens its mouth thinking the worm is going to go in its mouth because it's so used to the parent feeding it. And it takes it a while to understand why that worm is not coming in the mouth. But that's the nesting principle is after a certain age, you have to leave your nest you can't be in your mother's and father's nest all the time. You have to move out. And that's something that we as Indians find extremely... It's difficult for the mother to cut the umbilical cord. It is still present in some cases. It was present in my case for many years. And I had to literally, you know, ensure that that cord is cut. Sometimes it happens in our cases as father also. Is we have... We have not really taught our children that this is what is going to happen. We've not really communicated with our children that this is the reality of life. And because the communication has not happened properly, there is confusion in the family atmosphere. Times have changed. We used to have joint families where there used to be even 20, 25 people staying together. We don't have that anymore. So it's important for us to educate our children and tell what is going to happen. When I went to around age 24, I understood that a lot of things that were happening with my father were a result of frustration, anger, disappointment. Most of the addictions that he was going through was because he was not fulfilled in his life. He was disappointed with himself. There was pain in his heart about certain things. You know, addiction is a result of pain that you're going through. Any addiction that you are going through is a result of pain and disappointment in life. And if you don't deal with the pain and disappointment, you will be struggling to overcome that addiction. But the problem is you're not cutting it from the root. You're just looking at the addiction. You're not looking at where it stems from. And so it's important for us to deal with our pain, with our struggles, with what our past has done to us. And that comes only when you deal keeping God in the picture. No man can solve those pains of yours. No man can put balm on those pains. It's only God who can heal you. Hallelujah. Glory. You know, God loved his people. And so he wanted Abraham to come out. When he called Abraham and he said, I am going to make you like the sands of the sea. It was a promise, not a religious one. But this was a promise where he wanted to form a nation. It was a national promise. And he said, come out Abraham. Even though Abraham was pagan, he could have chosen someone else. But he chose Abraham because of his loyalty. He saw characteristics that he respected God. And so he chose Abraham and he said, I am going to make you into a nation. And from Abraham comes Isaac. And from Isaac comes Jacob. He's getting them out. And we all know how Isaac, you know, or rather even Jacob and how the story of the Egyptian transition happens just because of the famine. And Suddenly they find themselves in Egypt. God takes
takes them to a land where he is pruning them, preparing them. And 430 years later, he asks Moses, he says, I have to form this nation now. He takes them to a land of Goshen. Goshen means coming near to God. And he takes them to Goshen and he says, come on, now is the time to form a nation. And 430 years later, there is a nation being formed. And Moses is given this task. You know, before any nation is formed, like we formed our nation. When did we form our nation? 1947 is when our nation was formed. And when our nation was formed, the first thing that you have is you have a constitution. And once the nation is formed, you need to have a set of rules that should be followed. If you don't have a set of rules, how will you agree on certain things that are right and certain things that are not right? And so it's important to have a constitution. You know, the constitution is the supreme law that each one of us decides to abide by. The constitution of India was formed and previous to that, we were actually a dominion. It was actually a dominion of India. And we changed that in a couple of years to becoming a republic. They spent almost two to three years just drafting that constitution. And of course, we know that it was spearheaded by uh, Dr. Ambedkar. A lot of credit goes to him, but there were many more people involved in drafting that constitution. We had Dr. Rajendra Prasad who was heading it. And they took most of the principles from US, UK, France, and a few more countries. And they made a draft. And through that draft, they came about with a complete constitution. Our constitution is the longest constitution in the world. With 395 articles, 22 parts, and 8 schedules, we have quite a long list, yet we struggle to do what is right. You know, it takes care, it ensures that your fundamental political code, your powers, the structure of the government institutions, and not only that, but also your own duties as a citizen are all embedded and written in the constitution. In contrast, God gives a very simple preamble. He says, I'm not giving you 395. Right now, you just take these 10 and start the nation. Later on, of course, I'll give you all the other laws. But you start with these 10 important ones that I'm giving you. And he says the first one is, I am the Lord your God. It is important for any nation or for any individual or any family to first decide which God you follow. Which God do you follow? You have to make that clear. As a father today, make that clear to your family. If there is confusion in your family, tell them, this is the God we will follow. As for me and my house, we shall follow and we shall love the Lord. If that is not clear, then your family is confused. The nation is confused. The people are confused. You know, after that, God says, of course, the first four commandments, he says, it's all about me. I am your priority. And if there's anything that is stopping you from giving him priority today, examine it. Is there your job who's taking away the priority? Is there your workplace? Is it your business? Is it something that is taking God's priority in your life because he's pretty clear and he spends four commandments saying focus on me keep the Sabbath holy because you need one day in the week just to focus on me don't do anything that day why not because you'll commit a sin because you cut something it's about focus on me the whole day spend the whole day during the week Focusing on the Lord your God and what he has said. You may be busy all through the week. You may have had a tough week. You may have had so many calls. You may Your boss must have put so much pressure. You must have put so much pressure on your employees. But one day in the week, you spend it completely focusing on the word of God. And then he comes to the fifth commandment. He says, honor your father and mother. Why? 
he gives the reason as well he says if you honor your father and mother you will live long in the land that i give you which means there are two aspects one is your personal longevity and secondly the blessings that god is giving you you will enjoy that for a prolonged period because you are honoring your father and mother no matter what they have done to you no matter how they have treated you no matter what they did to you in the past our duties are to honor them honor your father and mother is the principle that god has kept in the scriptures anybody who follows that principle will prosper you know scientists have done so much research and now they have linked that fatherhood is related to many issues in society i'll say that again fatherhood is related to many issues in society when there is no father in the family or rather i should have said lack of fatherhood lack of fatherhood has caused many societal issues they are seeing that any person who doesn't have a father has more tendencies to drop out of school even in cases when the father is not active it could be a father is not involved in the person's life there are cases where joblessness increases not able to take responsibility there are cases when drug addiction or any other addiction starts coming into the life because there is no father or suicidal tendencies start happening sexual confusions start happening in the mind because the father is not there when i say sexual confusions today there is a lot of confusion and these get solved when a father comes why because a father shows the way the father is the root of the plant the father is the say root if you are a father sitting there say i am the root because you are the foundation of the plant you are the one who is taking the nutrients out of the soil you are the one who is taking and grasping and sucking out all the water that comes from the ground and then you are transferring it to all the leaves and the fruits and everything in the plant as a father your relationship with god is the one that will provide the nutrients for your family hallelujah yeah. come on now are you sleeping you as a father will be the source of nutrition for your family and so don't take it lightly your relationship with god is absolutely important because it's not only for you it's for your family don't take your relationship with god lightly because it's not one it's so many of you who need to feed on the word of god you know we have in ephesians chapter 6 again it is repeated that honor your father and mother because that will give you blessings you know fathers need to also treat their children equally we see in the case in genesis 25 28 we see how isaac he was favoring esau over jacob whereas rebecca was favoring the opposite jacob over esau and in some families favoritism could be an issue understand that if you have more than one child practice not to have favoritism and say it in words you must remind them because children always feel if you have a sibling you'll always feel ah usko zyada diya mere ko kam kiya ha you're always favoring him you always you are not saying anything to him see now look 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 what he's doing you know these things always happen when there are siblings but as a father and as a mother we need to make sure that you tell your children that you are equal you don't have to justify every act usko kyu zyada lollipop diya usko kyu ye kiya all that you don't have to justify but keep telling your children that you are equal when you share things also share them equally so that they feel equal you know in this case there was resentment that was happening it happened in the case of jacob where he felt resentful about the favoritism and then it continued with joseph as well jacob started doing that to his children and he had a favorite out there what happened because of that his brothers got jealous on him and he had to face the consequences so ensure that there is no 
favoritism. You know, God gives us the best example. God says, you know, if in the prodigal son, if you see, God does not have favoritism. Even to the fact, if, you know, an earthly father would say, Gayao, chod usko, rene de, bhagya gar se, wapas mat ana kabhi. You know, that's what an earthly father would have said. Don't come back, don't show your dirty face. But that's not how God is. The prodigal son knew that he can come back to the father. He had full faith that he can come back to the father. Because he knew his father. And today, if you feel like a prodigal son, understand that you have a father who is willing to accept you no matter what you have done. No matter how much sin you have committed. No matter how deep in trouble you are right now. No matter what you have done in your life. Heavenly Father is willing to embrace you. In fact, He will come running through the fields to meet you halfway through. That's the loving God that we have. You know, we need to understand that God loves us tremendously. You know, godly fathers, you need to understand that you need to love your wives. Wife rather. You know, most families, we have this confusion. As we are raising our children, we start putting our trust in our children. And the love for each other starts dying. The mother starts putting all the love in the children. And the father starts putting all the love in the children. And you know what happens? Faulty expectations start building up. Why I have to so love my children? Because when in my old age, na, they will only take care of me. Na. If I don't love them, then they may not take care of me. So I have to love them. But what about loving your wife? She is the one you married. She is the one you have to love. She brought the children to, get, to you. You know, it's absolutely important to follow the basic principles of the family. The moment you go against those principles, you are in trouble. Tomorrow your children may not take care of you. Then where will you go? Your spouse is going to be there with you for life. Love your spouse because your children will be gone in some times. In some time. You know, we know in the Bible in 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 5, we know Elkanah was a wonderful dad. We see him, what an example he was. In 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 5, we see that even though Hannah was barren, he loved Hannah. And it says, Bible says that he used to give her double portion. In spite of being in a family where Penina, his other wife, would keep provoking her for not having a child. Even to the extent that she would go without food. And Elkanah would say, listen, why are you fasting? Why are you not having food? Am I not enough that even if you have 10 sons, am I not enough for you? You know, that's the love that we need to have for our spouse. Elkanah used two things. One is he would give gifts or rather serve. And two, he would use words. Practice these two things in your life. Always serve in the family. Because remember, you're the root. So you're at down, you're not up. So as fathers, sometimes we think we are up. So everybody should serve me. No, we are the root. So we are down. And we come upward like this. The plant comes upward. So we are the ones serving all the time. Taking everything and giving to others. Giving is pretty demanding. It takes a lot out of you. But that's what we are called to be as fathers. Giving all the time. How will you replenish yourself? Because our father is giving all the time. So he replenishes you. You replenish others because you are overflowing. You are overflowing with the presence of the Lord. And that's how you will be able to be powerful in your life. That's how you will be able to give. All the time you have to give. You cannot take from your children. You cannot take from your spouse. You have to give all the time. And that is what God is calling us to be as godly fathers. You know, so we need to learn from Elkanah's life. Of course, we can't learn about the polygamy that he is practicing, but we have to learn about the good things that he did in that. Polygamy was allowed in the Old Testament. Hallelujah. Not in the New Testament. Uh, and then, of course, we know we're coming to 
what exactly god love for for the israelites as well as for us was joel chapter 2 is talking basically about the end times that is coming okay we know that it sounds the alarm there are locusts that are coming you know it's an army and joel is giving us a sneak peek have you ever seen sneak peeks that they show i know in movie theaters i don't know how many of you have done that but after the avengers movie or after some movie you know there are people waiting to see what is going to happen in the next part right and nowadays they have two of it one comes then again the name comes again it comes you are all the time waiting what's going to happen next the bible already is telling you what's going to happen next not in small parts vistar mein detail mein it's completely exactly how it's going to happen and the swarm of locusts are coming there's a huge army that is coming why because people are not repenting you see today there is confusion why is there confusion because people are not looking at the word of god i'll tell you about a recent confusion there is something called as a pronoun generation what is a pronoun generation if you see most people on linkedin and their profiles have started putting he him are aadmi hai he him hi rahega na but they want to pronounce it and say he him or a lady nowadays is putting on her profile she her now why is this coming the explanation that they are giving is that i may be a male but i identify myself as a female what 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 come again come again i am a male but i may identify myself as a female or i am female i may identify myself as a male so they are saying that when you address me call me in spite of being female call me he did it ha huh? what a confusion of the mind this is complete proof that we are in a depraved generation it has started happening the bible is saying that people will lose their minds they'll get depraved and this has started happening you know what is the percentage of this happening it's one in five people are having this problem one in five is 20% one in five people are having a problem of identity one fellow is saying i am a woman of 18 years he is 45 years he is a male 45 and he is saying i am a woman of 18 huh? are you gone mad but you can't say that also are you gone mad there also they'll sue you defamation of the mind and this is the generation that we are entering in and god is saying that if you don't repent these depraved minds this generation of yours if you don't repent the armies are coming like locusts they'll come huge armies that are going to destroy these nations that are spearheading these efforts of the evil one and not only that but apart from the armies god is saying but if you repent i am gracious wow god in verses 12 to 13 he says god is gracious and merciful slow to anger and of great kindness and he relents from doing harm so we must be able to repent if you repent god is willing to forgive you know most of the israelites they used to have this tearing of the garments now what is the tearing of the garment it is where you wear garments and you say i am repenting the whole garment is torn but god is saying just by tearing your garment it is not repentance repentance should not come outwardly oh i'm so sorry i did it i won't do it again and then next day you're doing it again that's not repentance just using words is not repentance you must feel it in your heart i am broken about it some people are in the habit of saying sorry oh sorry 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 oh sorry 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 are lag gaya sorry eh laga sorry nahi laga sorry that's not sorry that's not repentance and we do that to god most of the times i'm sorry 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 every day sorry 
That's not what God wants. God doesn't want a sorry. He wants a broken heart. And that's what he's talking about in verses 12 to 13. And then we go to the final and the best part in verses 28 to 29. And we read that this morning. And he says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Wow. Now, interesting thing. He says, I will pour out my spirit on Israelites, on all flesh. And this exactly happened in the book of Acts, where he was pouring out on the day of Pentecost. It happened, the pouring, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit happened. But I'm telling you, that was not the event. The event is still happening and it's going to happen even more. It started on the day of Pentecost, but it's going to keep on increasing and there's going to be a huge, a huge revival, a huge outpouring of the Holy Spirit, where the whole nations will be hit by those outpourings, where it says that your young men will see visions and old men will see dreams. It's happening today. But it's going to increase. It's going to be like an out. What is an outpouring? It's a full flood. That many people are going to be able to do that. And that is already happening. And it started happening. It's already. There are so many revivals that have already started happening. And it's going to keep on increase as the time goes by. But the point that we need to ask ourselves today is. Are you rapture ready? Are you ready? To meet the Lord in the skies. Joel chapter 2 is clearly saying that Israel has been established and the rapture can happen anytime now. So the prophecy has already been fulfilled of Israel being established. The rapture of the church happens now. And once the rapture of the church happens, we know that there are a lot of changes coming about with the Jews. There's going to be the temple that is going to be established. We're going to have a peace treaty. The Antichrist surfaces. We are seeing traces of that happening. We haven't seen clearly of what exactly is happening. But traces of that are happening. How do we know? China is already experimenting with a social system that rewards you if you speak for it. But punishes you if you speak against it. So which means that if you speak good things against the regime, you will get good points. You can go and buy good ration. You don't speak good things, minus points. You know how you have in school, minus marks. That's what is happening in China. They are experimenting with this. And I believe this is one of the parts of the Antichrist because he is going to be authoritative over all the earth. And so we have such things being implemented. Three and a half years of peace when the Antichrist comes, gets into the temple. I won't go much into that because pastors already said that just last week. Goes into the temple, there is the abomination of the desolation. After three and a half years of going into the temple, pronounces that he was Lord, he wants to be ruling the earth. Three and a half years more is war and complete chaos over the whole earth. And after three and a half years, we have again the coming of the Lord. Amen. So the day of the Lord is approaching. It's coming soon. But if you have accepted Christ, you have nothing to worry because you will be raptured. If there's anybody today struggling with the belief that Jesus Christ is Lord, because I'm telling you, that's the criteria for you to be raptured. For you to be saved from this day of the Lord. It's the only criteria. If you believe in the son of God. And you change your ways. And you repent of your sins. And you want to follow Christ. I'm telling you. You are going to be raptured. Direct access to the kingdom of heaven. You are doing a bypass. You know you have a bypass lane. You are doing a bypass. You don't have to go through all this. What is going to happen on the earth. If you have been postponing your decision of making Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, the time is now because we are looking at it happening anytime. Come upon, come on, jump upon the, 
bandwagon and we are going to be celebrating as pastor was saying this morning we are to be celebrating once we get there or we are actually already celebrating because we have made that decision already so two things that we have to look for is are we rapture ready and secondly are there people around us who need to understand the rapture which we need to look into so in conclusion i beseech you brothers and sisters firstly is to have love as a father as a going to be father and even as a mother the first thing we have to understand is there are certain principles that we need to follow if we follow godly principles in our life we will always prosper and secondly we need to look into the fast approaching day of the lord the day of the lord is coming really really soon we cannot be saying we have a lot of time for preparation because the time is very short it's time to prepare and to get your hearts right because god is coming the angels and the armies are coming very soon so prepare get rapture ready because we are all going to meet the lord very soon hallelujah so let's give the lord a clap offering and uh, thank you lord for this wonderful time we want to give you all the glory and honor we want to praise you and we want to keep our hearts ready to meet you very soon in yahoshua's name we pray amen, amen.